So in these questions, we're going to be talking more about meiosis. And the first question is, what are homologous chromosomes? So homologous chromosomes, homo means of the same. Logus means structure. So of the same kind of structure. Now they're not identical chromosomes, as it says in A, because otherwise they'd be called identical chromosomes. But what they do is that they, they what they do have is that they have um, these chromosomes of the same structure, and they have the same genes in the same loci or the same positions, but not necessarily uh, the same alleles, which are different form of the genes. So let's draw our chromosome here. This is our centromere in the center. And this one, we'll, we'll say it's got three different uh, alleles. So it's got A, got B, and then it's also got C at the bottom here. So these, they might have a variety of different alleles. So this allele, so on this particular one, it might have allele A. Let's actually not call it A, let's call it allele Let's call it allele 1. Now for the second one, it might have allele 4. And for the final one, it might have allele 2. So with a homologous chromosome, the key thing is that it looks exactly the same, just from the, ba from the basic one. And then furthermore, furthermore, it's also got the same positions. It's got this red band, it's got this green band, and finally, it's got this blue band at the bottom. But the key thing to note here that might be different is that the alleles here are different. So instead of having allele 1 over here, it might have allele 3. And then instead of having allele 4 here, it might have allele B. And instead of having allele 2 here, it might have allele Z. So they're just the same types of chromosomes, the same structure of chromosomes, with the same genes in the same sequence, but not necessarily the same alleles. Okay, so that means that B and D are wrong. Non-identical chromosomes, that's correct, with the same genes, yes, in the same sequence, yes, see how it goes red, green, and, goes red, green, and blue it won't get mixed up, but not necessarily the same alleles. The answer is C. So with question two, this is actually quite a tricky question. A cell in the testes of a male chimpanzee contains 48 chromosomes, and it's about to undergo meiosis. How many molecules of DNA will be present in the nucleus of the sperm cell just after meiosis? So the important thing to know is that there are 48 chromosomes in this testis cell, so this is an initial test of cell prior to undergoing meiosis, so it hasn't undergone it yet. How many molecules of DNA will be present in the nucleus just after meiosis, so before and after? And the important thing to know about this one is all the aforementioned information, as well as that 48 chromosomes, that means that there are, say for example, there are so if there are 48 chromosomes, that means that there are 24 pairs, because it's a diploid cell. 24 pairs, which means that it's a diploid cell. But however, at the same time, because it's, this is just before it's about to undergo meiosis, it also means that there are 48 chromosomes, but that means that there are also 96 chromatids. And this is what it looks like. So, remember in meiosis 1, when you have homologous chromosomes lining up at the equator. So you have, they line up like this. Etc. So you have the 24 pairs, so in this case you've got one pair, you've got two pairs, three pairs, and four pairs, etc. So you'd keep on drawing them all the way up to 24 for this particular chimpanzee testis cell. And after that, what you would do is that you notice how many chromatids there are. So each arm is a chromatid. So this is 
So this one over here has two chromatids, so there's one, as well as two, three, and four. So for every pair of chromosomes, there are four chromatids. So there are 48 chromosomes, which means that there are 96 chromatids. Okay? Okay, so what happens after this? So this is the first stage of, um, so this is metaphase one of meiosis one. So after that, after meiosis 1, meiosis 1 is a reductional division. Remember that, so it's a reductional division. So that means that the cell goes from being diploid to haploid. From diploid to haploid. So how many, how many chromosomes will there be? So it's going to go from diploid to haploid, which means that there will be now 24 chromosomes. 24 chromosomes, how many chromatids? Double that as well, so there will be 48 chromatids. Okay, and now with meiosis 2 being the final stage of meiosis, remember meiosis has, meiosis has two parts, meiosis 1, which is the reductional division, and meiosis 2, which is similar to mitosis. This one is not a reductional division, it's actually called an equational division. And this is not that important for the IB, but just notice that the number of chromosomes of the cell doesn't actually decrease, it stays the same. So, stays haploid. Okay, so now, how many chromosomes are there? We said that it would stay the same, it would stay the same. 24 chromosomes. However, with this division, the chromatids, they split apart. Remember if we had, if you remember here, you have a chromosome like this with the, with the centromere in the middle, and then it would split either side so that so the spindle fibers on either side, they would kind of connect to the belly button of the centromere and pull them either side. Okay, so then we have these two chromatids splitting apart from the chromosome. So that means that there are 24 chromosomes as well as 24 chromatids in each cell. The last thing that we just have missed out was the number of different cells that we had. So for this first one, this we only had one cell. We had one cell with 48 chromosomes becoming two cells each with 24 chromosomes but 48 chromatids. Notice that if you do 1 times 96, you get there are 96 chromatids. 2 times 48 chromatids means there are also 96 chromatids. And finally for this last one, after meiosis 2, you have 4 cells. Because the 2 cells from meiosis 1, they have divided to become 4. And if you do 4 times 24, you also get 96 as well. So this, the number that we're looking for is the number of chromatids in each cell. So now let's look at the question. How many molecules of DNA will be present in the nucleus of the sperm cells just after meiosis? So sperm cells, it's a plural, so it's talking about how many molecules of uh, DNA will be in the four sperm cells available. So we said 24 times 4 equals 96. So then for each singular sperm cell, how many chromosomes are there? How many chromatids are there? That are the same, it's 24 over here. Notice how we have 24 over here and 24 over here. Very difficult question, very tricky question actually. And the important thing to know is that as you go from pre-meiosis to meiosis 1 being completed, then it's the reductional division. So you go from 96 to 48. And even prior to that, you need to know that 48 chromosomes means 96 chromatids. So for example, back here, you have two chromosomes, but four chromatids. You've got the one, two, three, four. Very tricky question and a very good question. Okay, so question three. What is chorionic villus sampling? So chorionic villus sampling is uh, one of the techniques that they use to test the DNA of uh, babies before they're born. And you need to know that CVS, or chorionic villus sampling, is actually sampling from the placenta. 
so it's A. But we're going to go through B, C and D as well. Sampling cells from the fetal digestive system, so this is not usually done, so it's a bit of a red herring. How about C, sampling cells from the uh, amniotic fluid. So this is actually done as well, um, usually done later than uh, chorionic villus sampling, but um, is called amniocentesis. This is the, the fluid that's around the baby, and then you're taking the fluid that's around the baby, and then you're doing genetic tests on that. How about D, Stamp, sampling stem cells from the umbilical cord. So this is not usually done as well, but um, it can be done in certain cases uh, if the baby is particularly ill. But just know that chorionic villus sampling is taking cells from the placenta. So it's not actually taking it from the baby itself, it's from the structure that's just next to it or adjacent to it. Now let's do a couple of karyotypes before. So remember what a karyotype is? It's where you organize all the chromosomes in an individual and then you arrange them according to size, so the biggest ones at the top, as well as structure. So oftentimes when you have a karyotype, and the thing that they'll give you is Down syndrome or trisomy 21. And what you do there is that you kind of count across until you find chromosome 21. And then if you see th th times three of them, then they have Down syndrome. So in this case, let's count them. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Aha! So for 21, there's only two copies here, so it's completely normal. So they do not have Down syndrome, so we can get rid of C as well as D. How about the other ones? So is it a male or is it a female? How do we tell? Well, a male will have XY. And X is the big chromosome over here, and a Y is a little one. So in this case, the answer is A, a normal male. If the answer was to be a normal female, then we wouldn't have this small one over here. We'd have two large X chromosomes next to each other like this. And if that was the case, then the answer would be B, a normal female, but not in this case. So our second karyotype is from this particular question, and we have to get our answers from looking at the karyotype. So what do we do? Once again, we label them. In this case, they've been all been labeled from 1 through to 23, because humans have 23 pairs, or 46 chromosomes in a normal human. So the second thing we do, now that we've arranged them and we've labeled them, is we look at chromosome 21. Okay, how many copies? Two copies. So two copies, therefore it is not, uh, it is not uh, Down syndrome, and it's not non-disjunction. Non-disjunction just means that the cells haven't, uh, hasn't split properly, so that there is a different number of chromosomes than normal. So if normal is two, it doesn't have a normal amount of chromosomes. It could have either one or three. Sometimes even four or zero, but those are very rare. So we know that there is no non-disjunction. Every time you hear the word non-disjunction, you have to think of the term Down syndrome. And every time you hear the term Down syndrome, you have to hear, think of trisomy 21. So these three terms are all together, and you should all put them in your long answer and short answer questions. So it's not A or B. Let's look at, question, at answers C and D. The fetus is male. Let's look at over here, at 23, there's a pair of large chromosomes here. So therefore it is not XY, but it's going to be XX. What is XX? XX is female, so the answer is D at the very bottom. There are plenty more YouTube videos for you to check out, just click on the links below. If you'd like to download the questions, as well as the answers, make sure to like us on Facebook first. And finally, if you'd like to find out how I got a 7 in high-level IB biology, make sure to check out our website in the bottom right-hand corner. Thanks.